Hey, everybody. Hello there. Hey, everybody. Yo, what up? Uh, Yo, what up? <laughs> Welcome to Sexy Nerd Science at Planet Comic Con 2018. Uh, we are sitting with Erica, uh, last name? Uh, Williams. Williams. Williams, thank you. That's a hard one. Sorry. Uh, I just I hadn't, I hadn't <laughs> learned it yet. That's all right. And can you, Erica, will you tell uh, everybody where you are affiliated with? Yes, I'm with the Greater Kansas Chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Very nice. Easy enough. Very nice. We, uh, we definitely, uh, how do you say, support that? Thanks. Yes, I mean, like, that's, that's I guess perfect. that's the way to say it. Support suicide prevention. We prevent appreciate yeah. that support, too. Yeah, definitely. We, uh, we actually had, um, it was the last, one, not one of our last podcast, when uh, Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. Yes. Uh, that, was, that whole episode, we were lucky enough to have another podcaster on as well. And a lot of it, he's a high school teacher. So a lot of, you know, the, the stuff we were talking about, super applicable. And anybody, I hope anybody from the high school that was hearing that um, was there. Because, I mean, it's, it's something that uh, I think it's still taboo in some places to talk about stuff like that. Like Absolutely. Mental illness especially is still a taboo thing. I mean, okay, as of today's date, mental illness is not a taboo, taboo subject only because of recent tragedies that bring it to light. But, but that's when, the only time. Yeah. When that doesn't happen, right. mental yeah. illness gets swept under the literal and metaphorical Yeah, and usually it's talked about in a bad way, and it, it becomes a blame rather than um, a really great talking point. But absolutely. I mean, we've come a long way in talking about it, so it's not nearly as taboo, but it is a taboo subject still, and people still want to hide it and don't want to talk about it and still want to sweep it under the rug well, as we I, were talking about. I, I definitely... Yeah, of course you can take a piece. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I definitely think uh, one of the things that it, it's more—I think it's more taboo for the people who it affects the most. Uh, I don't think it, I mean uh, people who uh, people who aren't actively uh, having those uh, those feelings. They, I think, they can talk about it in any sort of manner. Um, but I think when it's, it's affecting somebody. They're, they have a harder time talking about it because they don't have that outlet or anything like that. So Some people don't necessarily feel comfortable enough to talk exactly. about it. Right now, one of the um, campaigns we are promoting at our table, um, it's called Cease the Awkward. Cease the Awkward, which is actually perfect for this kind of setting, which, which we thought really it was set out to, um, very recently, set out to reach um, youth. So really more like, high schoolers and young adults, but it's it's this really great way to just figure out how to break that ice with somebody you might be worried about or might be talking about with yourself even, and um, it's about breaking that awkward silence, and there's this really great character that's used in it called Awkward Silence that appears in really awkward ways and says weird things to kind of help break that, so you can feel better talking to somebody or asking about, you know, look, I've been kind of worried about you, and I don't know if it's just me, but, mm, exactly. and then start that conversation. So it is about that conversation starter, because it's not always easy to have that conversation, per se, until you break that barrier. So that's good to mention about that program. Are there other, other programs that stand or that are prominent like that one you're doing right now? You know, um, AFSP, way easier to say than American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. So when I say AFSP, that's what it is. Um, but we have several programs, and one of the ones that um, I have taken out to schools and, uh, before, and we've taken to different organizations, and all is called um, Talk Saves Lives. And Talk Saves Lives, I, it's pretty heavy in statistics at first, but it talks about the research that's being done since AFSP is the top um, grantor of, for private research for suicide prevention. And so then it starts talking now that you've got that knowledge, that's always good, that education and that knowledge, and then you can start talking it through and how, how do you approach somebody and what's the better way to talk about that. That's good. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the, the great ones right now. We have More Than Sad that reaches out to a lot of teens and those that work with teens and young adults, too, that have um, just the, what to look for. Yeah. 
So does anybody within the organization, I mean, within like the local chapters, are there like specializations for like, you know, we specialize in reaching out through Facebook or like online settings like Tumblr and things like that and other people like in life, real life situations and are over the phone with like hotline calls. Um, is there something similar? Because I noticed um, we talk about it a lot uh, on the podcast and even. Uh, with Drew, where there was an example where, you know, jokingly posting something on Facebook um, triggered an algorithm on Facebook to then be like, hey, like, we think that something might be going on in your life. Like, here's numbers, people to call that you can talk to and things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. as a physics guy and person who loves statics and number, I mean, st statistics and numbers, like, you can play that game with really good success. Like, you can pick up on hey, unfortunately, these people that are experiencing bouts of depression, they have very similar Facebook posts or traffic yes. to their page, you know. And uh, if you can have algorithms that can detect those on social media and target those people specifically with other things, like Facebook's briefly experimented with, unfortunately, the opposite. Uh, right. Making, changing people's emotions for the negative by just yeah, bombarding their page with, bad stuff. Right. One of the oddly positive things that Facebook has done, because I am not for everything that they have done, so yeah. I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, you are so wrong. That's not what this is. But one of the positive things that they have done is they have put a reporting system into place. So that could be what some of those algorithms end up picking up too, is you can actually, if you're worried about one of those posts that you see from somebody, in that drop down box where you can report something, it it will ask you, is this is post this, worrying you or is it, you know, yeah, does this look, does sound it, like they're going to self harm kind of thing. And then they start putting things into place is, do you feel comfortable messaging this person? If not, you know, they'll pop up um, something to the person that you have reported the post about and says, hey, somebody's worried about you and we'll start doing some of that. So yeah. there are some positive things going in it. It doesn't always connect well, it, when their algorithms are off base. Well, yeah. and see, some of some of that uh, that we that I had experienced was uh, that I I don't know if it was an algorithm that or that somebody had you know reported the post. I think it was actually like a like a Facebook alg algorithm that that did it without without anybody even uh, reporting it or anything like that. And that was that I mean was, it was it was I mean, it was a, a work sucks post, you know, like. And one of those okay. kind of things, like, right. and it was just boom, like, yeah, like who hasn't uttered that phrase right. out loud? Yeah. But when you do it on social media now, like, yeah, w words end up being triggering within the yeah. system, right? And so it was it, like three minutes afterwards. It was like it sent me a one, and then it sent me another like ten minutes later because I didn't click on anything in the first one. So I was like, hey, are you want to make sure are you still you're there? Yeah, basically. Wow. And it was real. I mean, it was really interesting. I mean, it was kind of eye-opening. Like, okay, maybe, maybe that was because it was just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the, it's necessarily use the turn of phrase or whichever, but, um, but yeah. So, it was it was something that I I just hadn't thought about, and I was like, well, that's. I mean, good to Facebook for doing that, but yeah, that, yeah, that is one of the positive things they're doing. But you know, it does end up missing the point, but. At the same time, you know, if somebody did care Better enough be to reach out, sorry right, too. exactly I mean, right. I'd much rather have the algorithm err on the side of, of caution. safety Send and it caution. Anyways, yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, like, you just never, like, and that's, that's something that I think, I mean, obviously with the way that machines learn, like, that's, it's going to only get better and better and more accurate. Like, uh, I, I study, uh, in my philosophy class, I was studying uh, statistical pop probability rules, uh, and especially when it came down to psychological evaluations, uh, it was for recidivism rates in prison inmates. But the the statistical probability rules started, you know, uh, with three or four criteria, started becoming a better predictor of recidivism rates than psychiatrists and psychologists that were interviewing these inmates every wow. time, and it's getting to this point where like you could, I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibility to just create a really good program that's better at diagnosing and can pick up on things even than other people. And right. I, 
I definitely want people that are in that kind of realm of research, pursue the heck out of that because yeah. it's, I mean, it's going to save lives. Um, and especially again, like with the recent tragedy, like algorithms, maybe not necessarily targeted towards that, but just like frustrations with other things in life, mm -hmm. um, or warning signs, you know, if we start letting the machines learn a little better, they're almost always better than people. And it, it's, I, I hate mentioning that because like, well, you know, it takes the are, emotion out of it yeah. too. And you know, I think there's positive and negative to course, that, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to say like, Oh, let's just get rid of all the people and only have like <laughs> a comfort robot. Only AI. Right. Like, right. um, but it would just be, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. Well, it's, just how another, it's just another tool to, to help, you know, anybody, you know, um, cause I mean, not everybody's, you know, there may be a day that I'm in tune with listening to somebody else. There may be a day that I'm not in tune with listening to somebody else. Uh, but if that tool is there or useful enough to pick up on their and social that's the human aspect, yeah, right, uh, yeah, because I mean, you there's a human aspect to uh, to us, you know, because we are humans. <laughs> that weird, that, yeah. <laughs> uh, but are we? I don't know. Okay. We're weird humans, yeah. You, you take uh, you take that away, and th there's still that the ability to pick those up without having to go. Okay, well, I had a bad day, so I didn't notice that. So, right. So, what made you get into this line of work? So, it's another good way to put it. Yeah. That's um, really when it. Let me backtrack. When I was growing up, um, I didn't have anything special per se. Grew up in the suburbs of Kansas City. Did a couple dogs, fenced yard, mortgage. We were a family of four, you know. I mean, it was just, we were the typical American dream, you know, epitome of the American dream. Two cars and really. two and a half kids? Or exactly. is it the other way around? Well, two yeah, kids exactly. and two and a half cars. Exactly. Right, right. So we had the two cars. And the, I mean, it was just textbook. We went to church every Sunday. And at that time, it was just, that's exactly how it was supposed to be. So here, when I think life sucks, which really it shouldn't have in that kind of privileged type environment, um, really, I was competing against myself, competing against everybody else without ever really realizing it. And, um, and that um, effort to try to fit in with the cool kids at failed miserably. And um, I was really kind of shown, not necessarily told, kind of told, that I was just too weird and too awkward and that was not going to be happening. And I was involved in a whole lot of other things to try to connect. And um, I just felt chronically mediocre is what I consider it and thought I was really dragging things down. And so one day I just thought, this is very painful. I'm not doing anything. And um, I really thought the con common denominator of the whole situation of just dragging everything down and me being so mediocre is I just needed to remove myself from the equation. It was just going to make things run better. So one day after school, I went home and decided this, I, I just needed to remove myself from the world. So I did attempt suicide that day. Um, and I'll just, I'll just say how um, I just started collecting pills from around the house from whatever my parents had or whatever. And can of coke and decided i was just gonna go to sleep one last time didn't write a note thought nobody cared and i woke up so that sucked for me in that time um so i kind of kept fighting against a lot of that because i was miserable about that but i didn't tell anybody since nobody talked about it at that time so nobody knew what i had gone through i told everybody i'd caught a stomach bug so that's kind of what it was for two days um, went on, went on. Um, I eventually met my soulmate. We got married, had three kids. Um, and after the, the third one, after having a very stressful job and I was on a downward spiral, he noticed some things not right. And he urged me to, he urged me to see somebody because he saw something was wrong. That's good. Right. I was, I was sleeping a lot more and I was just so much more irritable. And, but I didn't think I needed help because I'm fine, right? That's what we tell ourselves. I'm fine. 
So I just happened to have a doctor's appointment that I had set up quite some time back and had forgotten about. And they called and they were like, you, are you coming? And I'm like, oh, it's probably a sign. I should probably go in and say something. And so I was finally diagnosed with depression at that point. And that was 13 years after my suicide attempt. And I don't ever want anybody to think that there is something so wrong with them. They want to remove themselves from the world and not even know why. Just, you know, to really push something's wrong. Go ahead and seek that treatment because Definitely. not everybody does. And so it just, it took me a while to talk about. I reconnected with a friend, a positive of Facebook. And um, she lost her mom to suicide. And that was since high school. I, um, I decided to go to her as confession. And I just thought I was going to lose a friend, you know, because she lost her mom, but I'm still around. And I closed my computer. Every time I, sh I would share stuff for a while, I'd just close my computer and cry about it because I didn't know how people were going to react to me. Yeah. And uh, part of all that stigma, you just don't know, especially when you're first coming out about that. And she actually came back, was very encouraging, told me she was glad I was there. She invited me to an out-of-the-darkness walk that... Um, the AFSP does. And I went in, I wore a tutu because that's what I do. I think they have superpowers. And I went up, I was asked to be, whoop. And um, I was actually asked to be part of the bead ceremony, honor bead ceremony. I had no clue what that was, but I'm like, okay, count me in, whatever. And we had this really awesome thing in the walks with the honor beads. It looks like Mardi Gras. It's not. Um, what it is, it's a very beautiful way of showing people how you are connected to suicide or to mental health. And um, each color represents your connection to that. So when you walk around, you can see where you have connected. So two people wearing purple means you've lost a friend or a family member. Um, so a couple people a wearing, better. yeah, so yeah. a couple people wearing red, you know that you've both lost a spouse. My color mainly is green because I struggle and I still continue to struggle and I'm okay with that. I'm willing to talk about it now. So Definitely. I just, I was asked to be part of the board at that point. I just knew I just needed to start doing more and I've really found this is where I'm very passionate. That's good. Yeah. We, the biggest thing we do here is we love passion. So, uh, I mean, oh, good. <laughs> like we, we find a lot of people who are passionate about uh, any number of things and, and we try and strive to uh, create those relationships ships with them through the podcast and everything so that's amazing thank um, you I was I was going to ask you to explain the, the bead ceremony but then you did it so you're welcome <laughs> I'm I try to be on it <laughs> well, it, gives, it gives people uh, you know uh, that connection to talk about it because the, they can they know that their their topics are similar so absolutely well, thank you very much for stopping by and, and chatting with us. Uh, is there anything Thanks. you want to plug real quick before we go out any social media or website that people can go to if they have issues they would like to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, our main one, so if somebody listens to this who is not from the area, they can just go to AFSP.org and find a chapter, a walk, that kind of thing. We're in all 50 states, so which know, is great. I know our radio station does the, the Out of the Darkness walk. Uh, every year as well, and they get a team together and everything. In Omaha, yeah. In Omaha, in Omaha so. great, yeah. great. Yeah, so Drew and I are from Omaha. Dale's from Detroit. Um, so it's... I, I, I Just real quick question. Have you noticed, I mean, like, are there any just blatantly wrong things that we're doing? Like, not necessarily like us, we're, but like right. as a country, as a society, royal that we. we're doing it's just making the thing worse. Is there, like, if there's one thing that you just need to just stop it, like, quit, what would you say it, quit ignoring be? the signs. I mean, it's, it's okay to speak up to somebody. It's okay to show them that you care enough. And even if they don't respond to you, they still know somebody cares because if they're having an episode or whatever, um, they're not necessarily in a place to reach out and say, oh, yep, I need help. You know, yeah. it that takes a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but th that is probably the biggest is just know those signs to look for. You know, if somebody has changed mood or they do have very self-harming or harmful kind of speech kind of thing, just know when it's, if it's not right, 
you need to probably say something, and that's part of that Cease the Awkward. So another plug here, um, CeaseTheAwkward.org is that perfect place to go and try to help break some of that down as well. But that's probably the biggest, so then we can get them to the help or treatment or whatever it is that we need. We can start going from there. So educating, educating the masses on what the warning signs are and things like yes. that. Yes. I, I love, I've, I've always been someone who, um, if you edu if, if we could just get everybody educated, like it starts at education. It starts yes. at education with children you know, when it comes to science or mental health or grammar, whatever. I mean, it starts with education. It starts young and yes. it never stops. It has to keep going forever. You always keep learning. That's exactly what I do. And I research a lot of things that I do because I do a lot of other weird things because I'm weird. And we so, all are. It's all weird. which is a beautiful <laughs> thing, actually. So that's, these that's celebrating. Are great for people celebrating this their weirdness is, together. This is family. This is our tribe. So we all should feel at home here. Definitely. But um, I'm always researching things. So some new holiday to celebrate or you know, any new cosplay or something like that, you know, just if you research and find out how everything works together and, you know, all of a sudden it's amazing what we can do and create when we just continue to learn. Not everybody is great at studying per se, but always learning. And so the education through that way is, is always the way to start. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. We really Thanks. appreciate it. I appreciate you having and, me. And really. what, what booth number are you at for, for anybody who listens? Because we'll probably get this up within the next uh, couple hours, maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully. If we do. Yeah. Perfect. Absolutely. Ashley, we're, we're not at a real set booth number. But if you go to the other side of the escalators from the 2500 area right there and we are right at the doors going into uh the grand hall okay, and perfect. right right by the skyway and right by the escalators we are easy to find okay, perfect awesome. awesome well thank you again, Thanks again. thank it. you guys very much well, I thank appreciate you for sharing it. too i i, yeah. I meant sad too as well thank oh, you oh absolutely it, it's not always easy and I, I when people make it look easy like you just did i think it helps a lot of i'm in people. a place where i can now yes and as long as we can keep talking about it even for ourselves, it helps release it and it's not internalized. So when you get to talk about your own struggles kind of thing, it's a beautiful release and you don't keep it inside and you don't implode. Thank you. Thanks, guys. This was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. We're <laughs> proud to have you on. Good. Yay. Yeah. Anytime. Woo.